All right, good morning. We got a Nico that we're replacing a chain on that obviously needs some deep clean. So we'll show you how we go through this. You normally can't clean this as well with the chain on. So I'm not changing this side. So I'll get to show you how we do both sides with, with the chain on and without the chain. Uh, Nico comes with two tools, which you just use to scrape that, have a shop back and then vacuum it all up the same thing here. All right, so you can see no more carbon. It's just pure metal, just metal. And then we've scraped all the extra off of here, off of the bottom side. Sorry, I know that light's being weird. But you can see on this one, the front half is always dry and dust. And then the burger gets cooked about halfway back and then it's rolling. You can see those squares, how they're all open? These are closed. That's pretty common. Now this side, I've got to do my work through the chain. All right, so what I mean by that is in order to scrape this rod, you've got to get in between the chains and then you turn off the gas at the valve and then you set how fast it spins. So if you set this for like six or seven minutes, it spins really slow and it'll keep spinning around slow enough that you can get in there and then get in there and then get in there. Okay, this is the mistake that I see 100% of the time, especially when owners uh, change their own chains, which you can do, it's not that hard, right? And they're trying to save money because they have to change these so often. They don't pull them tight enough because it's hard. So my tensioning, there's a bar right here that goes up and down. And so you push it all the way up, you string your chain, right? and I bring it to the back and keep it loose. And then as it runs through the cogs, you can see when I first did it, I had one more link. I cut this link out. And to be honest, it was fairly tight and it hooked real easy because I had an extra link. There is no extra gaps. What I mean by that is right now, I'm toothed on the front square I'm pulled tight and I'm toothed on the back. I pulled this as tight as I could and then I toothed it. This rod doesn't spin. So by toothing it, it kind of, what I mean is it kind of anchors. So I leave it hanging over and then you can pull from the bottom side and the front spins. So it just gets tighter and tighter and tighter till you have the chain completely tight. No, no sag at all. This is as absolutely completely tight as you can get it. Then, when we're done, this rod moves down and really puts it to tension. And that tension is what keeps this from getting all hung up on these bars. But they leave it one loose because you can't get it connected if you don't. Let me clarify that last sentence. They generally leave it looser than it should be because it becomes more difficult, not you can't get it hooked. You need to pull it tighter because you need to get it hooked. I haven't crimped it. I'm letting it run around. I'm going to watch the crimp. It's right there. And I'm going to bring it to here. Because once it's here, I can do my work on it to get it crimped. All right. So there's our crimps. Isn't that great? Can you tell which one? Right here. There's our crimps. There and there. Our tensioner's down. And you can see this is, so this is perfectly tight. This is just slightly, you know, used chain. So it's nice when you can change them both at once, but I mean, these chains are like a hundred dollars a foot and it takes a little more than five feet to put most of these things on. So, understandably, they don't wanna change chains that don't need to be changed yet. But, yeah, so we got all the carbon, like I said, off of both rods. All the squares opened up, all of that rod, because this is where the grease needs to drip through. I actually just saw a little spot in the front. Yeah. He like right there.
Okay, this is the burner box. We talked about this a couple times, but air gets infused, right? So you've got gas coming in the upper rail right here. And then you have the circulation fan that blows the oxygen in to combust. And look, closed, 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 closed. So you're not getting much oxygen pumped into this side, which does explain, because they said the right side of this unit does not cook as fast as the left. But what I was trying to make sense of it with them was that it's one burner. It's not a left burner, right burner. So, all right. So we didn't have fire on this upper right hand side. Um, I took off the orifices and cleaned them. It was a little gunked up. Maybe just wasn't getting enough gas pressure in the top. Here we go. So she's set for 980. She's hanging out right there. I'm running burgers through. And they hadn't been using this right side at all, so we're curious to see when they come out, but yes, sir.